Hello everybody and welcome, Rich here. And with the release of Operation Ember Rise, in today's video, we're going to be looking at the designer notes for year four, season three. Now, first of all, I do have to apologize as some of you may have noticed, my voice is not in the greatest shape at the moment. I am feeling a little bit worse for wear, but nonetheless, let's get through these balancing changes coming within this patch. And there are some very big interesting changes coming. So first up for this list, we're gonna take a look at soft wall destruction. And they say that they're continuing to improve the reliability of soft wall destruction with shotguns. The goal is to make sure that any wooden beam preventing the creation of a rotation hole is consistently destroyed. By doing so, they hope to make site preparation easier for defenders. So with that, the Italian and French revolvers destruction output will be on par with the D50. And they're hoping that this minor improvement to offer more viable loadouts and increase their attractiveness. But now let's start getting into the juicy details. And first of all, we're going to take a look at weapon balancing. So they've actually added 100 extra bullets to the GA A1 LMG and they say that IQ's LMG, which is also to be Amaru's, is receiving more ammo to be on par with other weapons of the same class as this LMG has had even less ammo than most of their assault rifles. The 417 DMR is going to have its magazine capacity expanded by 10 rounds and they say that to try to make the 417 a more appealing option, they've decided to increase the number of bullets per magazine. Twitch and Lion will be able to rely on 10 extra bullets per magazine with this DMR upgrade. There's a few bits here going on with the PDW9 and first of all the base damage is going to be 34. Damage at 18 meters is 34 and then once you get to 28 meters it starts to drop off down to 26 and again they go on to say that the SMG will now boast regular damage drop off like any other weapon of its class. It will still remain a completely viable option for the Spanish operator. Lastly here on the list of weapons is the Org A3 and this will actually be seeing a damage increase from 33 up to 36. And again the short accompanying paragraph with this goes on to say that the shotgun continues to be Cade's weapon of choice but they would like the Org A3 to be a viable alternative. Now that the Moroccan Defender has received a C4 and impact he is able to remodel any site to his convenience even without a shotgun. Increasing the Org A3 damage should bring the SMG on par with the TC SG12 shotgun. Them. So that is it for your weapons. Some interesting changes there, nothing too major, but do guys let me know what you think about those balancing changes in the comments section. But now let's get on to the operator balancing. So first of all here, we're gonna be taking a look at Warden and of course his ability. And first up is the penalty on posture change to 30%. Penalty on movement is 20% per meter. Time before penalty removal is set to 0.1 seconds. Full recovery is changed from one second to 0.5 of a second. Penalty on rotation is removed and penalty on lean is 20%. And that is some really interesting changes. And again, they go on to explain this by saying that following last season changes brought with Glaz, they were looking to implement a similar system to Warden's ability. The system used for the Russian sniper enables them to have a more the system used for the Russian sniper enables them to have more options to tweak Warden's vision, which it definitely needed, without a doubt, in my opinion. And although Warden is not an operator that I personally would use a lot, I do think these changes changes were very much needed. But will it have a massive effect on his pick rate? I don't know, but it will be interesting to see. Next up for the operator balances, we're taking a look at Capital, and they've improved the visual and sound effects for Capital's firebolts. So the firebolts will now have the same visual and sound effects as Goyo. They do go on to say that the change is mainly made for consistency, but will also increase the visual feedback of his ability. We obviously know that Capital's firebolts went through a little bit of a change not too long ago, and it was definitely for the better, but do guys let me know what you think about them changing it to have the same sound effects and visuals as Goyo. Lastly here for the single operators, we're taking a look at Fuse, and they've changed Fuse's deploy speed from two seconds down to 1.6 seconds. And again, they justify this by saying that Fuse's ability is very risky to use, especially on Windows. With an improved deployment speed, his gadget should be safer to use and more likely to surprise an unsuspecting enemy. And they're basically saying that their goal is to try and find a way to increase Fuse's attractiveness and boost his pick rate. And I personally think this is definitely a step in the right direction for Fuse. Lastly, for the operators here quickly, we're having a look at the shield operators and they're gonna be increasing the ADS time when the shield is equipped from 0.4 seconds to 0.6 seconds. So nothing too major there. And again, they do go on to justify this by saying that operators using shields were too complicated to take down and the window of vulnerability they offered when switching to ADS was limited. And we all know how frustrating 
frustrating it can be trying to take down a shield operator and they do say that they hope that by increasing the time needed to ADS when using a shield will result in more fairer gunfights. Let's certainly hope so. There has of course as I'm sure a lot of you will be aware of been some changes to operator loadouts and we'll go through these quickly now. Smoke's impacts will be replaced with a deployable shield. Rook's deployable shield will be replaced with barbed wire. Jaeger's deployable shield will be replaced with a bulletproof camera. Frost's barbed wire will be replaced with deployable shields. Mirror's deployable shield will be replaced with barbed wire. Legion's deployable shield is replaced with a bulletproof camera. Maestro's deployable shield is replaced with impact grenades. Warden's impact grenades are replaced with deployable shields. Dockerby's stun grenades are replaced with frag grenades. Glaz's claymore is replaced with a frag grenade. And lastly, Nox stun grenades will be replaced with a claymore. And the arrival of the updated deployable shield has forced them to rethink the utility used by all of the operators. They want attackers to have the right tools to counter any defense relying heavily on those shields. Also, Warden and Nock will finally receive their initial secondary gadgets. We know some time ago they were replaced to bugs and it's nice to see them have them back again. Lastly here for these designer notes for this new Operation Ember Rise is the diffusing time is being increased. So diffusal planting or deactivation is increased from five seconds up to seven. Planting or deactivating a bomb diffuser proved to be too short to them and to try to reward effective control over a bomb site more fairly, they've decided to increase the planting or diffusing time to seven seconds. Now, although it doesn't actually sound very long two seconds, I think when you're in that situation of planting the diffuser or trying to diffuse the bomb, two seconds can feel like a very, very long time. So do guys let me know what you think about that. But that is everything for this pre-season designer notes. Do guys, like I say, let me know what you think about these changes in the comments section. As always, I am really interested to hear your feedback. But for now, thanks a lot for watching everybody. I do as always appreciate your time. And until next time, goodbye. I am mentally challenged for something.